opinion, which skill does it, does it take to become a successful entrepreneur? Yeah, um, I think one of the most uh, important skills is that you burn for your idea. So you um, you have passion and you have persistence to do it for a long time, maybe without earning money, because not every startup uh, earns money in the first or second year. Uh, sometimes, as in the, sometimes uh, in the third year, um, yeah, and for. Being a startup guy, you need self-confidence and you have to be risk-taking. So um, you can't be the guy who tells, as who tells, "I want to be at home every day at five o'clock or something." That won't work. Um, yeah. Another thing is you need a high learning ability and uh, you need a nose for chances. So if you see something on the market happens, you have to be one of these guys who say, "Okay, there's a chance. I can do anything," and then I. Then I will earn money, and you can't be one of these guys who says, "Oh, I could have done that two years ago, but I didn't." So another guy did it. So um, this, I think, is the most uh, important thing, the most important skills to be a successful entrepreneur. Thank you. So this leads us to the next question: Who should not become an entrepreneur in the first place? Yeah, I, one thing I already told, so if you if you like your security and you like to be in a five, uh, yeah, to have, like to have the free time after five o'clock, so a nine to five job, and you don't like, you want to have free weekends every time, and you need this uh, uh, yeah, well-organized day, and you're not so the guy who, or the girl who starts to organize yourself very proper, then you, you should do that. And uh, it depends on the um, the question: Why are you want to be a business owner or entrepreneur? If you want to do that because your boss drives a big car and earns a lot of money, that that is the wrong reason. You should do that because you like to be your own boss. You like to organize your, your time like you want, um, and because you like your idea and you burn for that, and you think this is the thing you want to do, and you have fun with that, and not only because you think you can earn more money and because this is only one of thousand startups will earn a lot of money and will have a lot of employees and make a big deal and most startups will just be there and will do their job and will do a good job and they will have fun to do it but uh, don't want to don't will uh, they won't get rich or a big one the big players so, which steps are necessary to start a business in Germany? Well, that depends on the kind of business you want to start. So, if you do want craft work like a carpenter or a, a guy who builds houses, then you often need some special, um, you need a, yeah, uh, permission. So, you have to do your Meister in Germany. There's no real English word for it, I think. Master of Carpenting or something. <laughs> So that's special in Germany, you can't only say, okay, I can build houses, so I make a house building company. No, you have to get the permission and you have to get the right licenses and these things. But in general, if you do a startup, um, there are, uh, there's an administration part, so you need um, your trade license maybe, so you can get this, it's only 20 or 30 euros, so it's very easy to get that. But that's not enough. Then you need some insurances. Some of them are um, you have to have them, and some of the insurances it's good to have them, but it's your own decision. And you have to uh, take care on your healthcare insurance or how you organize your healthcare as a self-employed uh, guy or girl. Then you need your business bank account. Um, you need uh, your or if you. It depends on which legal form you choose. So you can be just a self-employee, or you can be a GPH or a AG or something else limited, UG, whatever. Um, and it depends on if you need your registration in the commercial register um, and all this stuff you have to do before you start with your business. But before you do the registration part, there is the business idea part, the business planning part. And this is, doesn't matter what you want to do. 
maybe it's a little bit less to do if you start a uh, gardening service because it's easier to build a business plan for that than you want to do a uh, high potential uh, financial business I don't know what thing <laughs> or a digital business or something and there you have to, to uh, do your business ID or to write your business ID and you have to do sparrings with people who help you with your ID to make it perfect and you write your business plan your business plan is never finished, so it's just an instrument. You start with that, and then you have to take it with your business, and maybe you have to redo it, and if you have to change anything, maybe you have to just to check if you are on your on your road, on your aim, if you uh, reach your milestones, or if there are anything going wrong. Yeah, and then one uh, big and uh, important thing is if you have a name, a trademark. You have to take care that you protect it because if your trademark will get uh, very, very well known on the world and you don't protect it, some guy from China or anywhere else will take your trademark and produce the same thing and then you have a problem. And then the uh, very important thing or you need the financing. If you don't have the financing for your startup, then you have no chance to get it started. So that's maybe steps you need to, to start. Which areas does the forward-looking business plan cover? Okay, some of the areas we already uh, spoke over the uh, second question, but uh, the first thing, you have to write your ID, your product, your offer, so you have to describe it in that way that everyone will understand what you want to do. So the best thing is just write it down and give it to someone who ne you never spoke before about your idea. And if he gets what you want to do, then you wrote it on the right way. If he doesn't get what you did, uh, want to do and you need to explain or do, or do further explaining to it, then your business plan is not good at that position because the guy at the bank account, uh, he only reads what you wrote wrote and if he doesn't get what you want, you won't get any money. So that's an important thing in the business plan. Write that way that everyone understands on point what you want to do without extra explaining. Um, then you have to write down who's your customer, um, who's your target group, so are these more older people or younger people, do you want to do customers over the internet or directly in the business? Um, do, is it business to business or business to customers? So everything, this kind, you have to write down and explain what you want to do. Then you should do a competitive analysis on the market. You should see where's the next uh, guy who does the same or is there one who does it? Is there a company who is maybe in the market and you have to, uh, there. You, have, you will do the same, then you have to check am I able to beat him <laughs> or, or I'm not and to decide if your strategy is then okay. So aims and strategy are very important as well. Um, yeah, you, you describe the marketing plan, so which way you will could, uh, do contact to your customers do you only do social media marketing, or do you uh, advertisement in the newspaper, or will you do TV shows, or just people tell people I'm here, and they tell another one, oh, he's there, and then there's enough marketing, so that, that's the uh, point you have to do in your business plan, um, and how will your distribution work, work, is there a partner who sells your products, do you need uh, supermarkets for your products, or do you direct marketing, uh, do you marketing on an online shop, all this stuff you have to uh, yeah, explain in your business plan. Then you come to the administration part, which legal form will it be, um, how way, uh, which way you will do your tax advising and tax audit, um, which tax model is for you the right one. Um, yeah then uh, it's very important to explain who are you, so who is the startup, who is the founder, who is the team behind the company, what are the qualifications of the team, what does you, or why are you the right person to do this startup, what's your history, what's your uh, CV, um, 
all these kinds and stuff you have to do in your business plan. Um, then you come to the financial part. So if you go to a bank, to a bank and tell the bank, I do a business, the first question will be, so when do you earn money? So you do your rentability, rentability planning, <laughs> um, and your, your economic planning, and you show up when do you, is your break even, when do you earn money, which, uh, you know, which costs do you have, which uh, earnings do you have, what is your EBIT, so earnings before interest and taxes, um, and this stuff you write down for three or five years, so you make planning for a few years, so that the guy at the bank or your venture capital list or your, whoever gives you money uh, can see when he will get his money back. So that's the only question. I give you money, when can I get my money back? So when is the business successful? Um, yeah, and then you do termination, uh, milestones, and you, uh, as well, you will explain the point when you say, okay, if I don't reach these aims and these milestones, I stop it. So you need this exit. And this is always in the business plan as well, because you need for, you, for yourself just um, a frame when you say, okay, the business is not successful and I have to stop it before it gets worse. And sometimes you, you will make a SWOT analysis on your business case, not, in, not if you do a gardening, shop or something, or something, but when you do bigger businesses, you do SWOT analysis on it and tells where are the strengths, where are the weaknesses, where are the risks, and all this stuff. And this is so, this is so the normal frame of the business plan, and then it depends on the business case. Sometimes there's more or less. Yeah. Who is a trustworthy contact partner when it comes to questions about legal entities, insurances, and patent issues? Yeah. This is one thing I already told you at the beginning. Um, so we at the uh, Startup Center or our colleagues at the Startup Centers at the universities or the Chamber of Commerce or um, the RDA, so the Regional Development Agencies, all these um, let's think, uh, neutral institutions, you can ask in the first step and they will give you a um, yeah, neutral answer and will be honest to you. So I have sometimes uh, people who come to me and say, I want to do a startup, and I ask them why, and they explain everything. And sometimes I have just to say, you are not the guy for startup. Please don't do that. Please stay in your normal job. Do your five to, uh, nine to five job. There you will be luckier than to do your own business because there the, the wrong yeah, it's a wrong attempt, but the wrong attitude to do the startup. So there you can go and have your first orientation to um, get an yeah, honest and neutral answer. And after that, you have to go to specialists for insurance, for taxes, for financial planning, for bank accounts, everything. And, but then you have a little knowledge and you can talk with them on the same level. And you are not like, I don't anything, can you please help me? And then he will charge you like 1,000 euros for nothing. Which ways are the, the finance startup? Yeah, um, maybe you have a savings or a rich grandma, then it's very easy. <laughs> but in most uh, uh, cases you don't have, and then you need a loan or you need funding, so maybe you can get a loan if your idea is very good and the uh, break even will be very near, then you can go to your house bank or local bank and just get a normal loan. Um, sometimes the bank doesn't get your idea, then you need maybe an venture capitalist, so you find another entrepreneur who has money and said, says, well, I invest in your business and I give you money, but I want to get something back for it, so it's just a contract. Um, and you will see maybe like in Hülof der Lüge, how it's called. Shark tanks. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, so they say like, okay, I give you 200,000 euros, but I want 30% of your company or something. And then you have this time, then you can go and make crowdfunding. There's just a new startup here in Evil. They uh, do a mobile cheese factory, so they drive with, an, uh, um, with a lorry to the, uh, to the farm 
and they just take the milk and produce cheese and then they give, give the cheese back to the farm and the farm can sell it on their direct, uh, yeah, direct market on the farm market. So, and he, is, uh, he did it this, uh, the way that he sold a uh, kind of um, stocks from a startup. So it's crowdfunding and a lot of people bought them and they don't get money back, they get cheese. <laughs> so if he is successful, they get every year 10 kilo cheese or something, um, local cheese, regional cheese. Yeah, then you have uh, the found, uh, funding banks, I already told you uh, in the beginning, so the Investitionsbank EBSH and the MBG and the BB, uh, DSH, these banks have different offers for you for fundings, for special loans, you get loans with very, very um, uh, with very low interest and um, you can uh, talk with them to special uh, breaks of paying back your loan and all this stuff so they are paid by the state and they are interested in helping you and they are not interested in making money and that's good because normal banks want to make money that's their business case and these banks don't want to they want to help startups. Um, then there's in Germany the KfW Bankengruppe. It has a very German name, KfW Bankengruppe. <laughs> Oder auch Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau. Um, this uh, bank was founded uh, in 1990, I think, for investing in the new uh, states in East Germany. And today it's a funding bank for every stuff. So for private people, they get funding for building environmental friendly houses and businesses get funding for using environmental friendly energy and all this stuff. So this could be a partner as well. Yeah, that are so the normal ways to fund or finance. Okay, in your experience, why right? so many business uh, sorry, fail. Oh, that I could answer really shortly because not the most businesses fail because it's the wrong reason for the business. So the aims for the start startup was wrong. It was like I do a startup as a carpenter because my boss has a big car or something. So these are people who don't have this um, mindset for a startup. They only see what other people earn and don't understand what's behind it. Um, and then it's really that they're missing out their setting growth, their business plan, they don't uh, take their milestones, they don't uh, check if their business plan, uh, business planning works, if they are on the right way, and they don't do their homework, you could say. Um, and after that there's normally the problem that they don't have a plan B or something, and then the business fails can't say it uh, more friendly or <laughs> more likely it's, uh, yeah. You have to be very, very focused on your plan, on your strategy, what you wanted to do, and you have to be the person with the right mindset. Not everyone is a founder or a businessman. Not everyone has the right mindset for it. And that's mostly, mostly it doesn't work if you don't have the mindset. Everything else you can learn. You can start without any best knowledge about rights and duties and uh, legal forms or everything that you can learn. You can read books, you can do Wikipedia, you can check the internet, but the mindset, the attitude and the, uh, the power you need and that you can't learn. If you have it or you don't have it. And if you don't have it, your business fails.